Hey, Super Achievers! This episode is part of a very special series I have curated for you. Your level of emotional intelligence is one of the most significant contributors to your success in life, however you choose to define success for you. In my emotional intelligence workshops, I use the EQI 2.0 model to help professionals and leaders assess how they are doing in self-perception, self-expression, interpersonal relationships, decision-making, and stress management, the main areas of the model. The model contains 15 competencies grouped into each of the areas I just mentioned. You can learn more about the model at mhs.com. So what is so special about this series? Each episode is a deep dive into a competency from the model with an expert who provides you with strategies for improving your emotional intelligence. In this episode, Harris Fanaroff discusses how to be more emotionally intelligent in your relationships. Harris serves as the Director of Client Relationships and Leadership Coach at OKA. Harris was drafted by the Washington Nationals out of high school and played college baseball at Lehigh University prior to getting into his leadership development work. Welcome, Harris. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. I'm excited to be here. Well, I, I, I'm excited about this topic, too. But before we get into it, let's hear a little bit about your background. Yeah, thanks so much for asking. So I'll give you kind of the condensed uh, version in a way. It's a very long story, but I'll give you the, the shorter story. <laughs> uh, so how I got into this work, and this will all make sense kind of once I wrap it up in the end. But I had always kind of described myself and my whole life was really centered around baseball. And so the way that I had really separated myself and differentiated myself from my brothers growing up was I was a baseball player. They were very, very strong academically. Baseball was my thing, uh, sports in general, but really baseball. And so I really centered my, my whole identity and my whole life around baseball. Uh, ended up playing throughout high school, got drafted out of high school, didn't go to the pros, but went to college. While in college, I got something called the yips, which is where your brain and your arms stop talking to each other. And, oh no! And so I was a pitcher that forgot how to throw, basically. And so it was a pretty traumatic, difficult experience for me. I got that as a freshman in college. Tried to come back as a position player, first base outfield, but it was really hard for me. And so I ended up stopping mm. playing baseball. Uh, middle of my junior year, I just stopped having fun. And for someone who my whole life was baseball, it was really hard, and I really struggled with uh, identity issues. Yeah. And so coming out of that, I, I went and I didn't really know what I was going to do. Who, who was I? I really struggled with that. And I was lucky to have a good support system that helped me help me be okay throughout all of that. Uh, I went and I started after college doing higher education consulting. And it was good. It was okay. I was sort of interested in it. It was a, it was a job. But I said, there has to be more out there for me. And so I started to have a conversation with anyone that would actually speak with me. And I probably had hundred different conversations. The hundredth conversation was, was with an individual who was a leadership coach slash sports psychologist. And he was going through a program at Georgetown University. And he said, do you want to, uh, as part of the program, I have to take on a client. Are you interested? I didn't know anything about leadership coaching. I just liked the guy. I thought he was interesting. I said, sure, let's, let's give it a shot. Uh, and I went 10 sessions with him being coached and it was a life changing experience for me. Mm -hmm. That identity issue that I had struggled with so badly after college, I was able to work through kind of reframe that whole experience. And I said, what you did for me, I got to go do for other people. So I went and got certified. One thing led to another, which led to me working full time at, at OKA where I love what I get to do every day. Oh, and it's neat how that that it's it, that whole journey was <laughs> it's yeah, really cool. It's, uh, it's amazing how how yeah. life works out sometimes. I mean, I, I like one of the ways that I think about that pretty traumatic experience as a success is it led me into a career and a job that I love that I don't know if I find without that pretty big failure quote failure that I experienced throughout college. Yeah. So um, something that I'm actually pretty grateful for now. Oh, yeah. Isn't that amazing how wild. that happens? It's absolutely <laughs> wild. <laughs> I know. So now today we're talking about interpersonal in general terms and then drilling down to interpersonal relationships. Can you share with our listeners essentially what is included in interpersonal and, and why is that important? Absolutely. Thanks so much 
for asking. So the interpersonal composite has three different components slash elements that are part of it. We have interpersonal relationships, which is all around creating relationships around compassion and trust. We have empathy, which is our ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. And then social responsibility, which is a, a willingness to contribute to the greater good, to greater society. So those three elements, interpersonal relationships, empathy, and social responsibility are the three that are part of this overall interpersonal composite. Yeah. And why is this an important part of the model, essentially? One of the ones that I do pretty well. So I don't do all of them well at all. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome yeah, to the, yeah, the exactly. club, right? Uh, the self-expression, <laughs> that one I, uh, I struggle with pretty immensely. But this is one that I, that I do pretty well. So it's one that I like. But it's all about the other's focus side of emotional intelligence. It's how, how we connect and how we interact and how we care for others. And so I think all the time it matters, but especially in a time where connection is as hard as it's ever been. We feel as isolated and alone as we've ever been as a collective society. Interpersonal matters so much yeah. um, and how we can be intentional, how we can work on it. So important, right? All the time, but especially right now in this isolated society that we live in. Oh, huge, right? And I think people are realizing how important other people are in I their lives right now, too. Amount, even like from... A lot of times we'll hear in the work that we do, oh, I'm an introvert. And it's like, even if you're an introvert, you still need a, you still need that connection with people. You still have to be able to develop it and work on it. It's really yeah. important. We all thrive and we all need that connection with one another. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And actually, I'd love to get into an introversion, extroversion, maybe a little bit later. I'd like to drill down into the actual subscale of interpersonal relationships. So what is, what is that in particular? I know you already mentioned a little bit, but let's go deeper into that. So interpersonal relationships and how I think about it is it's creating relationships and your ability and tendency to cre create relationships based off of compassion and trust. So those are kind of the two key elements when you think about connecting and interacting with, with one another. How I think about it as a high level is, is how how good are you? How much do you tend to connect and create relationships with other people? And so it's so important. What do you do intentionally to kind of be vulnerable, to share, to talk about, to connect with one another? And then how effective are you at kind of receiving that as well? And so interpersonal relationships, the component is one of the ones when I'm doing coaching that I just hear so much from. And maybe it's the world that we're living in right now. But I'm virtual. How do I connect with people? I mean, that, the amount of times I've heard that specific question in different coaching sessions, just amazing because people are hungry for it. And so what can we do? And yeah. a lot of the interesting thing is, is it's tough to be intentional. And a lot of us, at least in the coaching conversations that I have, aren't intentional about the relationship work that we do. We just kind of expect, oh, I'll, I'll just reach out to that person when out. But this stuff takes work and we can work on it. I mean, that's the amazing part about all of these different components or elements that there are all things that we can work on if we're intentional about it. Yeah. You know, I love that you bring that up because, and it's funny. And my husband, my, my poor husband gets, I get to share a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> I get permission though. But, um, I remember when we were first, we we're talking about getting married and we talked about, um, well, okay, what do we need to do to grow our relationship skills? Right. So reading and, and going to, um, yeah, of course, training, I've got to do that, right? But he's like, what, what, why do we, need, it's not broken. Why do we need to do that? And I said, well, we, we go to school for four years for college to learn how to do our technical skills for our job, right? But, but we don't go to school and learn how to have good relationships for stuff that's supposed to last us it's entire amazing, lives. Right? It's, it's amazing. <laughs> I know. So let's go to relationship school. What do we, what do we need to do to help uh, foster our better interpersonal yeah, absolutely. relationships? Yeah, so it's so important. One of my favorite ones is so a lot of times I hear, I don't know how to create connections with somebody. I have one good relation. I have one good conversation and then I, I don't know what else to say next or, or, or how do I, when do I reach out? And I don't want to be, I don't want to come off as weird. I mean, I, I hear that all like, I, I don't want it to be weird or uncomfortable. Yeah. And maybe I just am weird or uncomfortable because I do this stuff. And so literally, if I have, a, <laughs> if I form a good connection with somebody and we have one kind of good conversation, I put something in my calendar for a month, two months later that just says, Hey, reach out to, uh, Heil to talk about X. And so I literally will write down, reach out to him about the thing that we talked about. And so 
just in the sense of that's holding me accountable because life's going to come up and we're going to get busy. We're going to have the next project, the next thing to work on. And so that's one of my favorite things to do is just like, don't rely on yourself to just think about it. How can we actually set it up in our, and I'm very calendar heavy. I put everything in my calendar. It'll literally be had a good conversation with uh, Heil about the Yankees, reach out in two weeks, something about the Yankees just could be anything. Cause it's little conversations, little things like that, that, that separate ourselves. And, and, and I'll, I'll give that suggestion very often. I'll say, but they'll, they'll think I'm weird. That's weird. I'm like, if someone did that to you, how would you respond? Wow. I think that was actually really special. They actually remembered our conversation and thought so it's one of my absolute favorite ways to work on interpersonal relationships. The other one that I'll just quickly give, uh, they're just easy micro bites of, of interpersonal relationships is, is anytime somebody comes in my head, if I see something that reminds me of, of them or throughout when I'm in the shower or just random times when we think about that person, shoot them a quick note. Hey, thinking of you and X, Y, or Z. And the reason why I thought about, it, we love to know that people are thinking about us. We feel so alone in this world that we're in right now yeah. when we're sitting in front of our computer, maybe for eight, nine, 10 hours and, and, and we're not getting that text. And so that text can be so meaningful and so helpful. And it's just, if they, sh- if they say into your mind, shoot it off. If you know you'd enjoy that type of reaction from somebody, send it off. And so I love doing, those are kind of my two favorite go-to interpersonal uh, relationship tactics that I tend to do and recommend to people. I love that because I and I'm smiling big because I'm a very task list and calendar oriented person as well. So I'll actually put it in there, too. I got it. I got it. I'm throwing the question back. I'm not the only I'm one. I'm throwing the question back to you, Chris. What are you, some of your favorite uh, interpersonal relationship uh, uh, activities to do or to help your clients work on? Oh, good one. Yeah. So I do like that too. Yeah. Very task and calendar oriented. And I'll make sure and review that before I have a conversation with someone so that I can, you know, ask about the kids, ask about the spouse, ask about the vacation or, you know, or the partner, how's the partner doing? Um, Just so that I can check in on that because we can't hold it all in our heads all the time. Right. But then I want to make sure that they know that I I care enough to actually track that stuff. So I will do that. I'll mention that before I have a conversation with them. Um, and just when people share little things about their lives, just to sit and actually Huge. listen, actively listen. Huge. It's so important not to think about the next thing you're going to say, but actually being present and, and going into it. Like if someone shares something about them, I like to go in. I mean, I'm, I'll am i have work conversations that we have 30 minutes of the first 15. We're just talking about whatever vacation they have coming up. because They haven't had a vacation in two years or or the, yep. the, the thing coming up with their child that's that stuff, I think it's just so important. Like we'll get into the work. The work is important. We'll get to it. But at the end of the day, I want to create that bond with people. We don't, we don't get that very often. I mean, curiosity is a superpower. I, I like truly believe yes. that the majority of people that we talk with are not curious. I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's the reality of it. If you can be curious, that's a superpower. And re- being uh, present in the moment, I mean, curious can just be amazing when it comes to creating those different relationships. Yeah. Well, and it's time invested, right, in um, with that other person. And it's funny because one of the things that we teach the virtual leaders, people who are leading virtual teams or hybrid teams, is make time for small talk in meetings, um, make time for water cooler yeah. talk you know, um, that you would get that you wouldn't get in person, make time for that virtually. Uh, because it is so important in building trust with teams. And as we well know, teams with teams with a lot of trust, I <laughs> say that 10 times fast, <laughs> teams with a lot of trust are more productive. It's They're a big more high one that I've heard is uh, we don't have the water cooler yeah. conversations anymore. I don't get the chance to talk with X. And, and my pushback is like, you, you have their email, you have their phone number, like nothing is, hold- well, my calendar is, well, is this important to you? If this is important to you, you'll make time yes. for it. And a lot of times on autopilot, we just don't think about it. And so that's literally, I mean, I've talked to people who have 15 direct reports and like, oh yeah, I haven't checked in with them. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? What do you like? What? They're worried about that. Like <laughs> yep. you might have a lot on your plate yeah. and I don't know if anything is as important when it comes to the overall team success as you connecting with all 15 of those people. And so something else is going to have to yeah. give so you can be intentional about doing that, but it's not going to make itself on your calendar unless you intentionally do that. And so it's something that I've heard a lot about and it's so important and so easy to just let go. And uh, <laughs> so. Exactly. Um, 
Yeah. I love that. Well, and um, one of the things that I like to do if someone says I'm too busy, I say, well, replace that with it's not a priority. Like I'm too busy to work out. It's not a priority to work out. I'm too busy to eat healthy. It's not a priority to I eat healthy. That. I'm too busy to check in with everyone. It's not a priority to check in with I everyone. I love, love, love <laughs> Changes that. Changes their perspective. It's so important. I mean, I, yeah. I, it's, uh, I've had a couple actually conversations around They've wanted to work on interpersonal relationships, but it's with a combination of, I know you've done a, another podcast on this element, but really high self-actualization mixed with lower interpersonal relationships. And so that's the driver, the person who is always, I want to hit that next yeah. level, hit that next layer, achieve my next goal. And the people part, I don't necessarily, it's just kind of getting in the way. It's taking up time. Uh, yeah. And so it, <laughs> for those people, it's about, okay, so what about these relationships is going to help you achieve your goal? Because me just telling you to care about relationships is not going to do anything. You're going to have to care about it. And so if it helps you with self-actualization, yeah. let's do that. But that's been a lot about how do we get someone to care? I mean, it's, it's true about relationships if that's just not something that they care about. I mean, we're not all yeah. driven by relationships, but we well, let's find out because we all need relationships in order to have success. We can't get where we want to go without the help of other people. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And that brings me back to, um, I remember when I was, um, just starting out in the career field, it was like, go, 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 go after goals, goals, goals. And then when I became a manager and then I had to catch myself, I would go in and start like, so did you get done on the, oh wait, how was your weekend? It's so true. <laughs> I had to train myself. Yeah. It's so true. <laughs> now I can't imagine life without relationships. It's just, it's what brings, well, happiness as well as opportunity. 100%. I mean, like, yeah. it's hard to be happy without other people around you that you have relationships built around compassion and trust. No matter how yeah. high you get up in whatever organization you are in or whatever, you're, you don't have the people along to enjoy it with you and you're not reaching out to others and others reaching out. It's just, it's not going to be enjoyable. I mean, I, the science proves yeah. that for sure. Now, you had mentioned earlier too, um, introversion and so extroversion. So we often think extroverts are, are great at relationships and introverts are, well, I mean, not all of us think yeah. that way, right? But some common myths around that or misconceptions. Can you share a little bit about how those play in with uh, interpersonal relationships? Yeah, I think it's, it's really important to mention because it comes up a lot where someone says, I'm just really introverted and, and I don't, don't make me go into a big space and create and talk with all... Okay, I get that. Everyone can have their own flavor of interpersonal relationships. I mean, uh, for an introvert, that just might be having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody, calling them, uh, sending a one-off email. Like, it doesn't have to be going into a crowd and, and creating all these different relationships with a bunch of different people. Like, do it in in your own way. And and introverted interpersonal relationship work isn't any less important than extroverted interpersonal. And so maybe it's like you spending some time on your own thinking about hmm. What would Chris really like that I can that I can do for her that would be really meaningful? And then you go do it. And that's like spending time on interpersonal relationships as well. And it's not necessarily just us connecting for an hour, but it's me being kind of thoughtful and introverting on some of the things that you would like and then sharing that with you. Um, and so that's a little bit about yeah. like it doesn't all have to be communicating outwardly. It can be utilizing your introvert strength from an interpersonal relationship as well. Yeah. Other ways exactly. to connect. And I think like we have to be realistic in a way also like your goal, if someone says, Hey, I want to network more. I want to meet more people. Okay. What does that look like? Does that look like one person a month? Does that look like five people a month? Like let's create goals around some of these interpersonal relationship skills that we're working on. Cause I think that's really important. Cause someone could say, I'm just really bad at this. I don't, it's like, okay, let's just set some micro goals as opposed to just thinking about how do I network more? It's what does that actually look like? What do you want at the end of this networking? And then let's kind of build around that. It's something that's come up a lot in the uh, coaching conversations that I've been having. Huh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. When I go in with those, I think about, okay, who can I connect with? Not what can I get out? Of, I used to, right? <laughs> what, what goals can I get out? But now it's like, hey, who can I talk to? And who can I be exactly. curious about? And then it's, it's just, it's weird how just stuff starts happening from that, just coming in with that so true. kind of mindset. I, I, lo I love, love, love that. Uh, like I, I heard this once and I love it. Enter with uh, curiosity and leave with gratitude. And that, and that's literally it. And that, that's all Ooh. you need when it comes to networking. You don't need to go get something. Like whenever I quote network, 
it's not an ask. I'm not asking for anything. It's just, I want to yeah. be curious. I want to learn about you. I want to understand you. I'm sure in me asking questions, I'm going to get something, some piece of knowledge, something that's going to help me. But it's not like I'm going yeah. and asking you for something. And then on the back end, it's, I'm grateful for your time. I mean, our time is our most valuable resource. I'm grateful for everything that you provided me in this. And then that's Aww. it. And then like a year later, we might partner on something. Yeah. Two years later, six years later, like the world happens. And that's like what I think about with network, <laughs> like yeah. uh, the infinite game. It's like, I'm not here to try to get something. I'm here for 15 years from now when we connect around something and we build something magical because of that conversation that we had. Like, that's what I believe in in networking. When I think people get in trouble is when they yeah. come out and they have goals with networking and like, I have to get X out of that. It's like, nobody wants to connect that way. Nobody wants to net yeah. network that way. Let's just be genuine and be curious and yeah. then practice gratitude at the end. Love it. The beauty of interpersonal relationships. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, some people, though, can overuse a strength. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what does that look like in this area? So I overuse this strength, for sure. Um, yeah. When this isn't balanced, and I mentioned it before, with self-expression, it can be pretty negative and, and pretty difficult. And so I, two elements that I struggle with immensely, uh, assertiveness and independence. When we are too mm -hmm. others-focused and not enough self-focused, it, it can be a dangerous combination. I deal with this and I see this. So I personally deal with it. I also coach a lot of people on this. Uh, always giving, 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 never kind of sharing your own thoughts, putting your foot in the ground, saying, here are my thoughts or my ideas, going at always having to kind of gain approval in order to get something. When this becomes mm -hmm. on overload and we don't uh, put our foot in the ground or go at things, in a, that's when this can get in our way, when we can be too others focused and not enough self-focus and something that I struggle with a lot. I'm aware of it and I know I do it a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. So when you are other focused, what is a more other focus? What is a, a nice way to balance that out? So you're both me and us. The one thing that's just been really helpful is knowing my EQI scores. I mean, it's very basic, but knowing that I'm a 115 in, in interpersonal relationships and a 74 in assertiveness. So I do that so much less. And so when I have a choice, 90% of the time, I'm going to choose others. I'm going to choose interpersonal relationships versus 10%. I'm going to put my foot in the ground and maybe lean into the conflict and say, no, this is what I really believe. And so understanding that I do this only 10% gives me a little bit more confidence to do it a little bit more and to know, I know I have a tendency to want to skew towards interpersonal relationships. So interpersonal so put my foot in the ground ever so often. So start to think about that and be intentional. Hey. That's my favorite way to do it. I also have uh, a coworker here who holds me accountable. Uh, so she's my accountability partner when it comes to nice. like, assertiveness and independence or things that I need to work on, things that I'm not very good at. I have low skill and ability at them. And so please hold me accountable. When you see me backing down and kind of giving in to others, tell me like Harris, Lean into your assertiveness. Show it. Like you don't have to hold back. And so that's Aww. been something that's been really helpful for me as well. Yeah. I love that. I have accountability partner. We work on different things because that's definitely not my area. Um, other areas I got to work on. <laughs> but but we help each it's other out. It's important to have somebody that can kind of see yeah. you and, and, and say, okay, I, I, I know you have a tendency to do this and let me call you out because that's an important, it's like a real life 360. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go <laughs> in person and in doing that you're building an exactly, interpersonal relationship that's like that's like my language <laughs> I if love i get it. to build an interpersonal relationship i'm a happy guy uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> i love it so now before we get to your final piece of advice on this topic uh, can you share a little bit you mentioned oka share a little bit of the products and services for our listeners absolutely thanks so much for asking chris so at, at oka we do three major things the first of which is we certify on a number of different assessment tools, the most popular of which is the EQI 2.0 slash EQ360. We also have another assessment that's relatively new, but, but coming out there called the Drive. It's all about motives and values and, and behaviors. And so there's about 10 different assessment tools that we certify coaches, trainers, and HR consultants 
on. That's one part of the business. Second part is we'll go into organizations and run workshops on things like uh, emotional intelligence, resilience, change, anything kind of OD, leadership development focused. And then part three is going to be we do some coaching and have support products around these different assessment tools. So that's kind of the three-legged stool that we have uh, and do it okay. I love it. It's it's like full compass. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So what is your final piece of advice for our listeners on interpersonal relationships? My final piece of advice, and I've kind of hit on it before, is, is to be intentional about it. It's a really easy thing to grow to the wayside and just say, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm just not really a people person, but that's just not true. We all have different ways that we can work on interpersonal relationships. And you made the point, we're going to be happier when we develop those relationships, when we work on relationships. So be intentional, use your calendar or reach out to that person when they get into your head, whatever it is that you need to do that's going to help you better connect with people, be intentional about it because it's, it's not going to be a natural first instinct for us to do. We're going to want to just keep working on that project or keep going after that promotion. But like, we probably have a better chance of getting that promotion when we've connected and formed a genuine relationship with the people inside our organization. And so be intentional about those relationships yeah. is probably the biggest thing that I would say. I love it. Well, and I think be intentional is just great advice the whole life, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us today, Harris. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed uh, connecting with you and uh, a big shout out to you and all the work that you do as well. Um, so anybody Aww. listening, I know if you have the opportunity to work with Chris, uh, you're a lucky person. So uh, thanks so much, Chris. I appreciate <laughs> your time. Oh, thank you. To learn more about Harris, visit his website at oka-online.com.